So good afternoon, everybody, uh, wherever you are in the world. Um, right now, I am based in London. I believe uh, that Joash is based in, in Brussels right now. So uh, welcome to the webinar that we have today. So I'm going to start by introducing uh, Joash Matthew, who is the Scientific and Regu Regulatory Affairs Manager at IPIF, IP, the International Platform of Insects for Food uh, and Feed. He is based in Brussels, where they are loving this about this subsector in of agriculture. So, in this uh, presentation, he will explain why insects are important for the sector and the role of insects in sustainable food. Um, he will go through the EU insect as food and feed sector and he will also talk about uh, IPF activities and outreach. I think this is a really interesting topic you know the previous conversations I have uh, about Joash I've learned a lot uh, about you know what they are doing and the potential of this uh, subsector uh, within agriculture and um, as you all know this is, <coughs> sorry this is part of our webinar series we already had uh, several uh, webinars uh, before and now we will have more in the coming weeks what we are aiming to do here is to bring top speakers that represent the latest trends and cover the hottest topics in the agricultural world in the past we have uh, flavio Fueta, ex-vice president and cmo of global gap talking about global supply chain and how they have reacted with uh, COVID. Uh, we also had last week uh, Daniel Katz, uh, Vice President of Sales of Infarm, talking about vertical uh, farming. We, we just had yesterday Guillermo Schiava from Databricks, which is the largest company in terms of data on the application of uh, big data and the agricultural sector. We are having in the coming weeks Sarah Ockman from the IFC, the financial arm of the World Bank, talking about food safety, which is also related with this topic. Also, we'll have uh, Nestle Mexico talking about creating shared value. Gregoire from Rainforest Alliance, he will be explaining how this uh, standard works uh, in, the, in the sector, which is also very related to sustainability. Christina, who is the global head of sustainable agriculture of Bayer Crop Science, she will speak about how they are working in sustainability. And finally, Esther Rivera from Nielsen will be talking about the digital transformation in the agricultural world, but also in the Horeca side, you know, of, of agriculture. So before I pass them to uh, Josh, I'm just going to give you a brief. Uh, brief with regards to the logistics of this webinar. Um, you have, you will be able to ask any questions you want in the chat, but the questions will be made at the end. So I will, I will read the questions. Um, if any of you want, they will be able to, 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 I mean, to speak to Josh. So I will unmute you and you will be able to ask any questions uh, directly. Also, because we want to make this uh, survey, you know, uh, very interactive, uh, we will have a few questions uh, that we are going to be uh, asking uh, our audience so we can get some input from you and we can use uh, towards uh, the discussion. So maybe I'm going, to ask, I'm going to start with the first question before I pass on to Josh. So we can know where you are all based, where we are getting people. Uh, we have uh, over 40 people uh, attending, which is, you know, quite good. So let me pass them to the question before, and then I will pass them to you. Okay, so one second. So you can see the question now. So start answering, please. Mm, really interesting. Okay. Come on, a few more. Okay. 
Hej. All right, I think I'm, I'm gonna share the result. So we can see that there's quite a few from Europe, obviously, uh, because uh, we uh, we are we're going to be talking about the EU. But I think uh, it's gonna be very applicable for other markets. You know what Josh is gonna is going to say because they are at different stages of development. We see quite a few from America, uh, which is really interesting. But also we have from Africa, Middle East, and Asia and Australia. Okay, so. I'm going to pass the switch. So I switch the presentation to Josh. Thank you for your time, Josh. Really, uh, you know, really looking forward for this presentation. Uh, and you know, uh, I will be here if you need any support. And um, I leave it to you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Herman. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for all the attendees as well. Um, and it's a very good platform to be because we're talking about. Uh, sharing knowledge, you know, and it's a very good platform that the ESAM has created, uh, in which you can have a look at different angles through the uh, to the agri industry, you know. So it's a very very good uh, platform to share information and also connect uh, with each other during this time. Uh, so among those the different aspects in the agri food chain, uh, I want to introduce to you a little bit about insects, uh, which in the in the way of food and as feed for mostly food producing animals. Uh, when we are going towards the direction of uh, sustainable uh, production methodologies in the future for food, uh, we have to come with sustainable alternatives and, and one of them is insects. And uh, today I would like to discuss and also share with you uh, this uh, subject. Uh, I'm uh, Joash Matthew, I'm the Regulatory and Scientific Affairs Manager over here uh, at IPIF. Uh, we are based in Brussels uh, and uh, we represent the European uh, insect producers uh, to EU policymakers, uh, to the relevant EU institutions, that is, uh, to uh, you know, organizations as well as the relevant stakeholders uh, in the food chain and the feed chain. Uh, I would like to take you through, uh, through three topics overall. Uh, why, one would be why insects at this moment, uh, why, why should we use insects as food and feed, then we can have a dive into the EU uh sector how it how it is today and uh, give you a peek into what's happening over here and how it's been regulated and finally the activities that we do that is, uh, at ipif so uh, what is our role over here and how we are facilitating this this sector as a whole so Josh, why yes should i ask uh, put the question that you said at the beginning y yes indeed i think it'll be a good time right now yes yeah? indeed. Please. yeah sure Yeah, I think it's a good uh, question to start with. I mean, let's see how uh, everybody reacts to this uh, and and how uh, we, well, by the end of the presentation, how we evolve out of it. So uh, I think uh, it will be interesting to see how everybody stands at the moment. Do we have some interesting outcomes? So you can discuss the results, yeah? Ah, so yeah. So I think uh, uh, it'll be an interesting uh, path uh, down the presentation. And, uh, and I think, uh, the the at least we have the base where we better start with so it's good to see that uh, a lot of them uh, are inclined or to accept it until a certain level i mean of course uh, it's a it's a very big question to put in front of uh, but uh, we still have 17 percent to, to convince <laughs> if, if i can say so so <laughs> all right uh, how would i go back to the presentation i'm sorry um if uh, Ah, thank you. 
So, uh, why insects? Uh, the most, um, uh, the core of uh, the uh, core issue that we are dealing with today at the global scale is about the food production and the population explosion, more or less, but what, what we can say. By 2050, uh, we are estimated to reach above 9 billion people on, on, the, on the planet, which is a huge number because we have to feed all of them and, and uh, we are going to have a deficit of, of uh, protein and uh, we are going to have an increase in, in global meat production and consumption. Uh, we would have uh, we have to have high quality protein. We have to reduce the stress on the uh, on the environment for the for the farming practices that we are going to take, and uh, and that's the core core uh, of uh, most of the uh, model around which the insect sector is based on. Uh, we need also to valorize the food waste because part of the problem is also food waste, and uh, we need to solve that issue as well. So these two core these are the core elements of, of, of the insect sector as a whole. So we have a feeding population, uh, we have a food waste, and we have to tackle them together, and we need to do it sustainably. And uh, that's the uh, major focus uh, that the insect sector wants to address uh, in, 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 in its direction towards the future. So what we are going to have is a protein gap in, in the future due to the increase in population and there's going to be significant market growth for alternative protein because people, uh, the consumers are oriented to go towards uh, uh, different or sustainable sources of food in general, uh, which is to have a reduced carbon footprint and have a less impact on the environment. Also, the quality of the product also is uh, coming up to par and people want high quality protein or high quality food products in their diets uh, as well. And it's one of the uh, uh, one of the elements that is affecting uh, or boosting uh, the insect sector in a way is due to this evolution of the consumer, as well as the gap of protein and food that we are going to experience in the near future. So following that, we need reliable solutions. I mean, we, we have to we have to farm sustainably, but then we have to also provide practical answers to that. We have to produce the right amount of feed, the right amount of food. Uh, it should be practical, cost effective, and we need to diversify because we cannot be very dependent on one certain source of uh, of, of food or feed product because that could uh, disrupt the chain, the food or feed chain very drastically in cases, uh, for example, we have the COVID situation. I mean, if you are dependent on something extremely, then you go out of balance. Uh, so we need reliable solutions when we're talking about sustainability and uh, we also need to address the consumer demand. So we need promising solutions so that we address the food producers, the farmers, but also the demand of the consumer, what they want as well. Insects as food is, is very interesting because uh, it's not something that is new. I mean, it's, it's been consumed uh, around 80% of the countries around the world mainly because of its high nutrition it's 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 packed with so many nutritions uh, it's uh, it's high in in uh, in protein uh, almost uh, 75 85% of protein content per 100 grams uh, it's high in in all the essential um, it has all the essential amino acids in it uh, you have uh, they're rich in in the minerals and vitamins uh, in africa for example uh, it's uh, you have uh, women who have this deficiency uh, with anemia uh, uh, complementing the diets with insect based uh, foods to, to because of the high iron content and the calcium content in them uh, so that's the the element the core element of the uh, of the of the food itself that it has to be highly nutritious and and beneficial for your body while also addressing all the um, uh, nutri nutritional requirements that you need as a, as as a human and uh, insect, insect protein or insect nutrition is going to go in that direction as food. It's a high quality, high protein uh, food that can be targeted towards consumers and also uh, beneficial for specific, for example, like elderly uh, people, sports nutrition, there's a big market over there as well, uh, and uh, food uh, supplements and functional foods uh, as well. We also not necessarily have to eat it in a way uh, that's just about protein, but it's also about the healthy fats. You have to have the uh, vitamins and minerals that is complemented. And also you have to adapt to the, the changing uh, uh, consumer itself, as I mentioned earlier, because now there's a lot of demand for uh, organic food, vegan food or uh, paleo style of eating, etc. So we need to adapt to the consumer. 
uh, who's very conscious about the environment and, and sustainable alternatives uh, to what they consume. As feed, uh, insects as feed is basically you're feeding the insects to, to your uh, food producing animals. Uh, so that's the, uh, uh, the core uh, uh, part of insects as food and for feed. Uh, it's highly nutritional and uh, it has a very good amino acid profile and as I mentioned, uh, high in protein. Uh, it's important that the animals are are uh, the the animals are less sick, more or less, and that indirect that directly goes on to the aspect of less antibiotics or less uh, use of all these uh, elements, such as uh, um, medicinal veterinary uh, medicines that you normally could put in large scale manufacturing of uh, poultry, pigs, etc. So uh, it's important. Now, that's a, that's a good aspect about insects as feed is that they are because of the nutritional profile you can integrate them into their diets and the most important part is welfare i mean uh, chickens uh, fish and, and and pigs these 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 were always there in the natural diet i mean if you leave a chicken out um, in in the in from the hen coop and it goes and looks in the ground it looks for for these worms uh, it's it's a part of its natural diet and it's um, for example for the fish you can see in the picture it's getting out of the water to grab a dragonfly if it's making such an effort to come out of its water and make uh, a release that much energy to get that 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 uh, the uh, the dragonfly it intends that that's part of the diet and that's the focus as well i mean you're bringing back animal welfare into the picture uh, studies have shown that uh, in in uh, insect fed uh, feed uh, for poultry has reduced in feather pecking, so it's also a good uh, uh, example to give. So the bottom line is also it's highly nutritious for the animal, so it falls less sick, and also it's part of their natural diet. Another way to look at the insect sector is uh, through the waste system, because uh, we are trying to always reduce waste, uh, try to recover waste, recycle, etc. And uh, most of the, uh, we are trying to reintroduce the waste back into the system of the food system, more or less. So at one point, normally you would also, uh, agri-food industries, they, they have uh, the waste from uh, the agri-food industry that could go as animal feed as well. Uh, and insects can also fit in that over there, as you can see, uh, you can send those uh, uh, low value material of food waste uh, to insects to feed on. And then you could still bring back the insects into the food chain that's back to your, your animal feed or as, um, as, a human, uh, as a human diet. So it's possible to get that circular, comp uh, circular economic uh, uh, contribution, which is my next point, which I'm going to go to is the core element of the insect sector. Uh, it's uh, the circular economic model is something that was the most sought after uh, methodology because uh, you're trying to minimize as much as waste as possible and you're trying to bring in all the products back into the food chain in a circular way and so there is a high uh, utilization rate and less waste in the end. So here we can see that insects they can use or upscale under exploited byproducts from the agri-food industry. For example, uh, you have the uh, malt from the beer factories or those uh, all those uh, veggie veggie uh, uh, industry agri industries that have the waste, vegetable waste, etc., can be taken into the, as feed for the insects. Uh, the insects convert them into uh, into their high value material like protein etc and the substrates that's uh, what the insects are fed on can be used as frost that is as as a uh, fertilizer uh, so it's another that can go back to the fields for example and uh, the rest of the insect can go as a feed again and as food and the system could get back uh, again it's a complete circle so if there is any waste from our food or feed chain again it comes back into the insects uh, as a substrate so that's the uh, interesting element that we can see over there uh, for the use of insects uh, as food and for feed that's we having shorter uh, shorter uh, uh, food chains and feed chains we can utilize them uh, those uh, it's very valuable for for the farmers and in the end we are really going to going to have a very less amount of uh, of we could save about one third uh, of uh, waste uh, in, in the Europe. That's what the calculation we did the last time was about one third of the food waste can be uh, upcycled through insect bioconversion because we have almost 90 million tons of food waste uh, annually in the EU. So that's the very interesting element that we can, we can utilize and, and, and insects play an important role over there. 
in a global perspective, again, why is because of the environmental effect that they're having. And, and we had the FAO in 2012 come out with this report on edible insects and, and the future prospects as food and feed, which was more or less the, the springboard for the sector uh, to be uh, taken into another level. Because it, uh, and I highly recommend if you're interested to, to go through this report because uh, it portrays the, the basis for, for insects as food and feed, the nutritional composition, etc. Uh, I, I have a picture on the right side. Uh, you can see it's uh, it's from one of our members, but it's very uh, represent not very uh, you, uh, but uh, in the quantifying. But then it's good to see it's a good representation about how much uh, how much space uh, you can save uh, for producing one kilogram of protein from insects compared to uh, to chicken or pigs or or or, uh, or the cows. Uh, about one hectare and 10 hectares, you can always uh, put vertical farming for insects as well. So you consume less space that way. Uh, the amount of water used for farming insects, insects is very, very low as well. And uh, last but not the least, I mean, they eat, uh, they don't need to, to eat that much to gain the same amount of protein than uh, any other conventionally uh, sourced food, uh, such as uh, cows or pigs or, or poultry would need as much. And they have a different uh, free feed conversion ratio which is very uh, interesting because that's uh, the core element of production for feed as well uh, so the environmental aspect is one of the uh, uh, pushing elements for the insect sector because of the land use which is going to be reduced the water and and the feed substrate and 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 the space uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, one of the core elements that we need to see for increasing production in the future for feeding all those people that I was mentioning uh, earlier. And uh, we instead of uh, using much space, we could always uh, it would be better to reduce the space and also cause less stress on 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 the on the feed chains and food chains. In in the end, I would like to like in the global perspective is to see the uh, addressing the SDGs. I mean, uh, the, the the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is the core uh, of what we want to achieve uh, as well uh, globally. That the United Nations is also working towards uh, insects as food and feed uh, tar target directly at least these five uh, five SDGs: uh, uh, responsible production and consumption. As I mentioned, we are talking about sustainable uh, production method methodologies uh, using uh, waste etc life on land so for us as i mentioned earlier you could use the insect um, substrate that's been fed on later as fertilizer uh, and you can have good health and well-being which is an important factor for us because we have to be healthy in the end and also the animals and then we have the zero hunger uh, the aspect in which uh, we are trying to fight food security, which is an important element in in a, in a global scale, uh, in order to have highly nutritional diets among among uh, among us, and uh, uh, finally life below water, because uh, most of the fish meal is being fished out from the oceans, and we can help to reduce the stress of the fish meal that is used in aquaculture. I'd like to take you now into the EU sector which we represent and which is our core activity uh, is revolved around. Uh, so I would like to bring about some figures to you. So you have about 6,000 tons of insect protein that is produced uh, in the Europe uh, annually. And by 2030, uh, we predict hopefully it will go around to 3 million tons. Uh, we have uh, investments accounting for more than 600 million euros, uh, going up to 2 billion uh, by 2025. Uh, of course, with the growth of the sector, you have jobs, which is very important, and livelihood, which is created. And uh, by mid 2020s, we are expecting at least more than 5,000 jobs, direct jobs, uh, to be created. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, as we see, I mentioned earlier, this is a global uh, global uh, uh, activity. That's not something that's very new. But then uh, at an industrial scale, it's it's a very novel, it's very new in the industrial scale. And Europe is uh, playing a leading role in, in terms of innovation and, and technology uh, and, and advancement in these sectors. So who are these insect producers? I mean, uh, it's also too important to identify um, who they are. Uh, most of them are startups, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, mostly small to medium-sized companies 
uh, most of them also small when uh, micro companies uh, and and few of them are long established businesses who have already been producing insects for biocontrol or for pet food industry or for zoo animals they have already been in that business and focused now into the feed business or the food business specifically then you have uh, the, the the element is that it's an indoor system so it's a controlled environment uh, so when we talk about escapes and things like that, it's always controlled. You have the the, the temperature and 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 the feed and the substrates that's fed to it, uh, controlled in that way. The varying conditions. Uh, then you have the joint ventures that happens, for example, with uh, larger companies, uh, local suppliers of food or food industries, such as Cargill, for example. They uh, tie up with some of the insect producers uh, to, to with the uh, byproducts that they produce so that they can be utilized as substrates. Um, you have in the end uh, to a, a fully integrated uh, uh, integrated companies that is just focusing on feed or food specialization. And this will in the end have an effect at a global scale because once the sector is as, as now it is at a start of an established uh, position, uh, once we can replicate, replicate it at a global level. In, in a legislative point of view uh, as well, it's very important because uh, in the end, it's always about uh, regulating your, your product on the market. And for IPIF, it's food and feed safety is, is a non-competitive issue because uh, it's, it's something that has to be applicable to everybody and, uh, and hygiene and all these standards have to be to the, is, is our top priority. Uh, so we follow our adherence as IPF members. Uh, we follow our uh, adherence to the general food law in the European Union. Uh, we are in cooperation with uh, the actors along the food and feed chains um, and also with the public authorities. When we are building this sector, we have to uh, be in close contact with the public authorities to help us to have it regulated. Uh, you have the common guidance and generic information that we as IPF create uh, so that we can share as much as information on, 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 on the hygiene aspects, on rearing uh, regulatory aspects that you have to follow uh, according to law, uh, and also on those regulatory developments that's applicable to each and every producer of insects as food and feed. So you have the general food law regulation, uh, and then you have um, specific legislation on food hygiene and feed hygiene. Insect food products or feed products are just like any other uh, food or feed products authorized on the European market. So it's important uh, to address the fact that even they follow or they fall under these uh, these regulations and they are regulated under them. Uh, we had an EFSA opinion at the European Food Safety Authority, which was mandated by the European Commission to provide an opinion on, on a risk opinion on insects as food and feed uh, earlier in 2015, which also concluded that they are more or less safe based on the production methods and substrates used. Uh, and the, the uh, good hygiene practices that are implemented is very, very important. And also, for example, the uh, monitoring the occurrence uh, of um, uh, of biological or chemical hazards uh, in, in the products. So basically the HACCP principles. And if all of these are are, are addressed, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a very safe product uh, on the market, just as any other food or feed product authorized. So it's important to uh, under EU legislation to uh, to address that insects are farmed animals. So it's it's also comes under uh, farmed animals, and thus we also have to be considered as an agricultural activity, and we, that's the reason we fall under all the legislation that's uh, applicable to feed production or food production. So because it's uh, it's a farmed animal or. Uh, at the moment, we are still considered at uh, at par at other elements. But then, uh, something I would like to discuss at a later slide is that how it's affecting us a bit because uh, insects have specific factor characteristics. Uh, they have specific uh, biological and physical properties that uh, uh, for risk management, for instance, uh, and uh, that's something that we more or less uh, want to change in the near future with the help of the authorities and in close. Uh, collaboration between the industry and the policy makers. At the moment for, for feed, uh, uh, as I mentioned, insects are farmed animals. So according to the feed ban rules, uh, insects are also supposed to be fed uh, with authorized products. So over here on your left, you can see that 
insects can only be fed currently with plant-based substrates, unprocessed or former food stuff uh, without, uh, with dairy or eggs. Uh, but you cannot feed them with former food stuff uh, with meat and fish, catering waste or animal manual. This is because of the feed ban regulation, because uh, as you know, in Europe, we had the BSC crisis the, or the mad cow disease. Uh, which were, which happened in early 2000s and, uh, and, and, and and it was the onset of the new uh, speed band rules uh, which we are intending to 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 develop more specific for the sector in feed you cannot uh, you have a list of of seven uh, authorized uh, species uh, which are allowed otherwise uh, it could be generated to be, to be expanded but for the moment as feed uh, only those uh, uh, protein uh, feed, you, you can only uh, source them from those six or seven um, so species of insects, which include uh, from uh, B tenebria monitor, from mealworms uh, to crickets and grasshoppers. Uh, so the final target species products that you get from them is uh, the protein, the fat or live insects. So the target species, for example, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there is the pet food industry, so you can feed those insect protein that is uh, the insect uh, processed insect protein to uh, to only to uh, to pet food, and recently in 2017 we were able to achieve uh, an authorization for 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 aquaculture, which was a very big uh, uh, push for our sector. Uh, and uh, in the near future, uh, we are in discussions at the moment to authorize insect protein uh, to for poultry and for pigs, and uh, we'll be hopefully. Uh, intend to have that early next year and uh, that's our that's our main regulatory calendar more or less so if you can see the one two and three over there so the one was we already achieved it that's the uh, authorization for uh, for aquaculture the second uh, regulatory calendar focus for us for feed is the poultry and for pigs and thirdly we want to expand uh, the substrates for uh, for insects so because of the feed ban rules as i mentioned earlier you cannot feed unprocessed form of food stuff with meat and fish uh, to insects because of the regulation uh, but we intend to um, to expand that uh, for insects because of the specific characteristics because they don't harbor uh, uh, those um, specific uh, spongy forms that can be transferred to to humans and uh, the specific characteristics of the insects themselves uh, against those viruses or or, or, or uh, microbiological pathogens uh, and uh, a simple way to understand is that you can hack basically feed a a uh, form of food stuff that is uh, food that was supposed to be for human consumption but was discarded. So you can feed uh, a pizza uh, with without a salami uh, to to the insect that's vegetarian, but you can feed uh, you cannot feed one with a salami. So in in simple terms, that would be kind of the way to think about it. So you cannot feed animal or origin protein to to uh, because of the feed rules. When we come to insects as food for human consumption, we come under the novel food legislation. That's um, the novel food legislation, which was renewed and we had it enforced from 2018. So that's the regulation 2015-2283, which includes insects as food uh, to be authorized, uh, which requires a pre-market authorization. That means we have to apply for the authorization to put this product on the market. Uh, however, uh, because there were a lot of companies that were placed before 2015, uh, before the application of this legislation in 2018 as well, uh, so that the businesses don't go bankrupt for economic reasons, you can benefit from the transitional measure. So until there is a decision, a uh, final decision made by the European Commission on authorizing such products on the market, you may continue to put it on the market uh, until the final decision is made. The complicated aspect of the transitional measure at the moment is because uh, each member state, uh, it's very peculiar in the case of insects as food because each member state has uh, positioned itself uh, in, a, in a different way uh, in, in regard to the application of the transitional measure. But this is right now, in, uh, it's gone to the um, European Court of uh, Justice right now to give a verdict on where insects lie. Uh, that's another the very complicated story. Uh, you can always access uh, uh, the briefing paper that I have made on this as well. In detail, you'll find the the the, the whole uh, situation at the moment of the transitional measure. But uh, the application of the transitional measure that means you can place insects on the market in very few European countries. 
because uh, of their position, namely Netherlands, uh, Denmark, Finland, UK, and as long as they're there, and um, and some in in, in uh, some certain places with restrictions, like in Belgium, in Austria, in in, in Czech Republic, etc. Uh, we have 21 insect and oral food applications. So as I mentioned, you need to apply for an authorization. Uh, we have five notifications as traditional food. That means if it's a traditional food in the country, you can always apply it as a traditional food, for example, from Thailand uh, or from, from Mexico, for example, you can apply it as a, as a traditional food for notification or as a novel food application. Uh, there are several species con the, that is considered on this uh, in the 21 insects uh, species, um, mostly crickets, mealworms, um, grasshoppers and uh, drone larvae, uh, which is uh, being in the process at the moment with EFSA, the Open Food Safety Authority, uh, uh, who is assessing these products. And we are hoping for the first authorizations to take place uh, early next year. With novel foods and novel feed, we have novel challenges also. I mean, it's it's not uh, so easy to get those things done. I mean, uh, it's it's uh, we need to have we indeed have a lot of uh, challenges that we need to address. Uh, firstly, the need to upscale, as I mentioned earlier, we have to have, of course, a practical solution, but also uh, we need to be uh, you have to address the demand of the product. So we need to upscale on on, on giving the right amounts of uh, for production levels. Uh, that for for example for feed which requires a lot uh, for for the farmers to uh, integrate into their farms um, and and also to meet the demands so we need to upscale uh, we need more investment uh, for more technological advancements and 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 upscaling these plants as well uh, we need to address the consumers aspect because still insects are seen as as a yuck factor and also uh, it's uh, it's we have to address to them that it's safe, it's nutritious. We have to get uh, uh, get them on board uh, on this aspect and to at least make them understand that you can uh, substitute some aspects of the food and feed chain with that uh, with a sustainable alternative. One of them. Uh, then we need to uh, put more emphasis on the R and D. We need to fill in the knowledge gaps. It's a novel sector, but we need more and more to research uh, on certain topics. Uh, and uh, finally, the regulatory challenges. We need to expand um, the regulatory aspect for 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 the sector because it is it's very sector specific, and uh, some some of these have to be addressed at a level specific to the product. So we need to, for example, using um, the substrates as I mentioned earlier. So broadening the 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 aspect of what substrates can be used for insects, uh, and um, that's something that we are we are we are working on more or less. So what do insects eat, uh, more or less, what they feed on? So considering the fact that the TSC le uh, legislation is in place, so mostly most of them is co-products from agri-food industries. Uh, you have some of them, about 10% uh, farmer foodstuffs, and we have about 13.9% uh, of other products uh, on other market. So most of it comes from the agri-food industries, which is high in high, uh, in high amounts, and it's, it's good for, for the insects to feed on it. And we have, of course, uh, addressing both uh, converting it into upscaling it into, um, uh, into high quality products. Which species are generally, uh, at least uh, found mostly in Europe, uh, is most of them with black soldier fly. Then you have yellow mealworms, uh, which are the two mostly uh, produced ones. Then you have house crickets and locusts. Then you have the lesser mealworm. And then you have, in the end, more the banded cricket and the common house fly. So most of them, again, is for feed, but also for food as well. Uh, it, ha it has two different regulatory angles to it and two different uh, final products and application. So the process, how, how, do you, how do you get the product in the end? So this is more or less the similar uh, concept for both food and feed producers. Uh, what you do is that you breed uh, the insects uh, in the first stage, and then you feed them on those feedstocks. As you can see, the feedstock is coming in from the top, that's S1. You have the production phase in which you grow these insects and then you have the separation. So you need to clear out the insects and the substrate and the substrate can go as frost again later down for as fertilizer. Then you take the insects, it goes further, 
that's the processing part wherein you kill the insects and then you process them into making protein powder. You can extract the fats from them uh, and then uh, and finally selling it out at an outlet. So depending on what the product is. For feed, you have mostly the major core is the three products that you can get from it. That's insect protein, so insect powder, that would be whole grounded powder more or less. You have the insect oil, so the oil fats that you can extract from them, which can be used uh, as uh, for, for, for animal feed currently, like uh, for uh, fortifying those feed materials. And finally, insect frost, that's the, the substrate that it was grown on. Uh, and now uh, it can be used as fertilizer on, 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 on uh, farmland, more or less. So that's the three core products that come out of uh, if, uh, for feed, for insects' feed. Of course, you can go further on to extract chitin and, and so on and so forth, but the core elements of, on insects' feed uh, revolve around these major products. Insects' food is another Another story again, uh, because uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's 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 uh, it's fairly common to eat insects in in a majority of parts of the world. Of it's a different situation in in the Western culture, and uh, uh, we have more than two billion people who are eating insects on a regular basis, uh, mostly coming from uh, South America. You have some in Africa. Southeast Asia is a big uh, consumer as well. Uh, it's 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 a cultural aspect. I mean, uh, and also in 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 uh, Western societies or more or less uh, the agri uh, food based uh, countries is that the transition. I mean, everybody went from hunter gatherers to to more agricultural based livestock. And uh, at the, when you come to farming, uh, insects were treated as pests. So then that's the transition in which uh, they left back consuming insects to uh, consuming uh, farmed. Uh, uh, fruits and vegetables and livestock. Uh, but however, it was still consumed until not, not too long ago as well. And we reintroduced it to the Western market as well. Uh, insects, something very important, as I mentioned earlier, it's uh, food and feed safe. Food safety is very important for us. And insects uh, labeling uh, of allergen labeling is, uh, is something that we also address because insects contain allergens similar to crustaceans. So if you're allergic to shrimps or, 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 or mollusks, uh, or you can be allergic to insects as well. So it's another food safety aspect, uh, uh, which you can also, we should label. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, it's a very, very consumed product. And uh, in, in, in Europe, we had about 9 million people consuming insects in 2019. Uh, and uh, it's it's not, as I mentioned, I would like to show you in the next slides, uh, it's not about consuming them whole, but also as a powder, which is integrated into other, other food products. So the steps involved basically, again, in short over there, you can see below, uh, you farm the insect, you process them. So you have insect oil, a whole insects of powder. Then you put the powder, for example, into uh, incorporate into insect food products like pastas, burgers, uh, or you can have whole insects as well, which uh, very often is eaten as aperitif uh, when you have some drinks, for example. And then it comes to the consumer and the insect fat can be used in products in sort of, uh, replacing butter or things like that, which I can show you in the next slide. So we're not just talking about eating insects as a whole. In the European market, we have a lot of different variety of products. Uh, we have seen that currently we have a dominance of whole insects. That means uh, insects as whole, uh, not powder or anything. That's the major dominated market at the moment. But uh, in our uh, market fact sheet that we just released, uh, it shows that um, the transition is going to go towards more integrated products. So you have pasta, uh, you have those uh, burgers, insect-based burgers, uh, cookies, uh, protein bars. Uh, you can see we recently had one of uh, our members and also a research um, uh, university over here uh, who made waffles, Belgian waffles made out of insect fat. So it was also, uh, uh, which we which served in, uh, I mean, they did a sensory al uh, analysis on that as well. It was very acceptable. So it's not about eating insects as a whole, but it's also you can fortify them into your products. So you can, because it's a powder in the end, so you can always integrate them. And uh, most of the market is uh, going to shift more or less towards those uh, insect uh, protein bars and uh, those uh, supplements. Uh, Josh, should yeah. I do that question? The yes, 
So, so this is related to the diet. So yes. please feel free. Yes, please. So the, the question is basically, would you think about uh, complementing your current diet? That means you integrate maybe like, okay, today I'm going to eat insect pasta, uh, for example, you know? So that that's uh, something that uh, you could do. So that's the question basically that uh, we're talking about a, a, a very timely transition into our into our food uh, food diets, basically what we're eating. Yeah, I wanted to highlight that um, there, people are being very proactive. I have mm -hmm. a really large amount of questions and I think people are starting to talk to each other. They are connected on LinkedIn, so they're being very proactive. So I see a lot of really uh, keen uh, people, uh, entrepreneurs of, uh, of the insect sector uh, over here from all around the world. So it's really interesting. I think they are really enjoying the presentation. Thank you. Good. Great to know. All right. So let's Perfect. see. Let's finish the voting. A few more. OK, I'm going to end the voting and share the results. Josh, you can go for it. Um, so, all right. So we have uh, we have most of them. Yes, so it's a good sign. Yes, indeed, and um, eighteen percent is a maybe. So uh, it's 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 still a, a phase to go through. It the results speak for itself. It's uh, it's not about changing today. It's 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 a transition. So it takes time and. Uh, and uh, at least um, understanding the core element and how it affects your body is very important. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh, answer over here. You can go back to the presentation. Thank you, Emma. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, as you, as you, as you saw from the results, it's, uh, we could also see that people are also keen to integrate it. So we are talking about complementing the diets. We are not talking about replacing something at the moment. We're not saying like, okay, no meat from today, only insect food. No, it's not about that. It's about complementing diets, having a healthy diet. This is the core of uh, of, our, of, our, of our motto also. Like uh, we have to have a good and healthy diet uh, and there are different ways to do so. Uh, and also in the way that you integrate these insect-based foods, you can automatically also reduce your environmental footprint. Uh, that you're going to have the carbon footprint and it's going to be much more sustainable in a way even if you uh, change your diet for from for a couple of days so that's the kind of products that you can find basically on the market so you have you can because it's uh, it's in bread you can put it into almost anything that's uh, compatible with it so chocolates insect balls you have those meatballs you have those burgers and uh, and you can use insect fat uh, into 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 replacing a bit for butter, for example, and it's highly nutritious in the end. Coming to the last section uh, of uh, of of the presentation is mostly what we do. So, what's our role as IPIF over here? So, as I mentioned earlier, we are a non-profit organization, and uh, our core is to consolidate dialogue with the EU public authorities because we need to regulate this and also we need to put our, our voice forward to the policymakers to address what is our more or less uh, perspective on the market and what would be our demand as well. So we advocate the, uh, the legislative framework uh, of, of, of uh, the European uh, Union and we support uh, the implementation of this uh, legislation. So you have to inform and 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 uh, and disseminate the, the the information among our sector as well, and also to promote uh, development among uh, and best practices. So as I mentioned, we we have to uh, food and feed. Is not, it's a, uh, safety is not a, a competition. It's not a competitive issue. It's about uh, having your standard at a high level and having good hygiene practices in place. We also do uh, collaborate with other umbrella organizations uh, around 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 the world. Uh, for example, from Southeast Asia, uh, from North America, uh, from from uh, from Australia, uh, with whom we also discuss uh, topics at a, at a, at the international level uh, in 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 our activities. As you can see, that our members are mostly based in in Europe, uh, sixty four of us, and uh, it's uh, uh, but we also have non European members who are interested more or less on the market. 
you can see the IPF and its members. It's it's uh, it's our uh, our logos of our members who are very proactive and who have always been here to support the sector. And it's interesting to see that it's growing uh, day by day, and it's a good sign uh, for us as well. And I would like to show you like it started from 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 the scratch, like with five insect companies. So insect the IPF it started in 2012. Uh, we had an FAO expert group meeting after which we also, which one of the results was to have uh, a representative organization when you're talking to these policymakers. So you should have somebody to represent them, the, the sector, which is the logical step to go forward. And it was created by five insect companies, the pioneers of the sector. And uh, following which we had these developments on by the mandate to, to the to European Food Safety Authority on, on the risk. And then finally, we had um, in, in 2017, uh, the AFPA feed uh, authorization. Uh, we had uh, our first novel food applications uh, submitted by January 2018 under the new novel food regulation. And uh, we also created a guide on good hygiene practices, um, which is going to be uh, sent again to for, author, uh, for recognition from the European Commission. So it will be an EU guide. That's what we're aiming for. Uh, that's what we have submitted as well. And uh, finally, we are here today with 64 members, which is increasing and and, and, uh, and it's a good sign for us. And we are happy to support uh, everybody in the sector uh, as a whole. Uh, and in the end, we are contributing not just to our members, but also to the sector as a whole. So we make a lot of documents and communication materials on this. So when we have, we have, uh, uh, the traditional sector representative position papers. So on different topics, we have those press releases uh, when when we have important policy uh, specific uh, developments. Uh, then we do guidance documents as well. We create these communication guidance documents like the guide, as I mentioned, on hygiene, on, on novel food, uh, some fact sheets as well, which is very important uh, to, to, to have it uh, factualized, uh, all this data. Uh, we have media approach, of course. We we push it out there. We try to bring that uh, bring the uh, the elements necessary. We of course have it uh, in various element various events. Uh, we have uh, also, as I mentioned, uh, collaborations with some other associations around the globe. So we are making a white paper. Uh, hopefully, we we would like to release it by by the end of the month or next month in a couple of months. Uh, and indeed, in the last part, we are very active in, in, in dialogue with international organizations, for example, with the FAO, uh, who we play a, a major part with, or the OIE, uh, and, and, and uh, that's uh, our, our role of communication outreach that we do uh, in, in, in order to facilitate the messages of the sector and, and, and to, to emphasize the elements of, uh, of, of the values, the contribution that the sector can do. We had the farm to fork strategy that was released uh, just last couple of weeks ago. We are in it as well, so it's part of the green deal, and uh, and we are uh, we are also very happy about it uh, uh, that we will be contributing uh, in uh, towards the development of sustainable food systems uh, in the future uh, in the EU as well. So that would consolidate my presentation more or less and uh, thank you for your attention and your participation and of course uh, you can always feel free to contact us you can find us on our website uh, as well and uh, our emails and you can follow us on twitter and linkedin in which we communicate most of our uh, elements on, on policy developments and the next steps that we take uh, so please don't hesitate to contact us in the near future on these aspects Thank you, Joas, uh, for, uh, for a really informative uh, presentation. Let me let me take this out. I think it's going to be easier. Okay. Now, is it better? Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for the presentation. We have quite a few questions. So uh, what I will do is I will start sharing the questions uh, to the screen, and I will right. read the question right. loud. Okay. So I'll do it in order. So. Okay. All right, so the first question, let's see, here we are, from Mohamed Abdul Kalam. So, in one, an insect may be treated as food, 
but in other country it may not so how does it maybe synchronize this was at the beginning i think you explained what you're trying to achieve right correct uh, it's it's a it's a, it's a very relevant question i mean uh, it's very difficult to 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 uh, collaborate with different traditions and different uh, cultural backgrounds and food habits etc but uh, to do it at an international level is is really uh, the, the uh, that would be the ideal scenario so uh, but it takes time i think uh, having member organizations representing your 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 subjects and your opinions is important uh, having it synchronized between them and your national authorities they play a very important role so you should always approach your your national authorities to make them aware of such uh, advancements in these such sectors uh, and it's in the end it's about uh, inform informing everybody about and sharing and communicating about the subject so in one it's not so it was exactly the case of sushi it was not it was not a very uh, popular food not not too long ago I see. It's, it's a very fairly recent uh, it's a cultural thing, right? yeah yeah it's a cultural thing i mean it took time but i think the last 10 years uh, sushi now is like a very household thing uh, you can go you have sushi bars and things things like that it, it takes time so it was part of some cultural uh, orientation and it was expanded to the global level but it takes time so okay. most importantly is your officials they help you a lot uh, you have to communicate on your subject uh, proactively and, and that's the key uh, to synchronize it at the international level okay great so the next one from merlin what is the development in sales of the food no feed sector so food uh, over the last five years any data uh yes indeed uh, we came up uh, with uh, our market fact sheet uh, on insects as food you can find it on our website uh for insects specifically on this on this topic of insects as food but it's eu so it's an eu oriented document so we mm -hmm. had uh, uh, if i'm not mistaken in my pre in my presentation as well uh, it's was shared and i think in the section above i don't know if you can go back or yeah which uh which slide was it? Do you want me to go back? Yeah. Yeah, so, you can. Yep, yeah, please. Yeah. So which slide? Uh, uh, at the beginning, see. middle. No, no, no. I can, I can do that. Uh, let me see. Oh, you uh, go for it. Yeah, I'll just do that from here. It's more easier. So, oh, sure, sure. so we had yeah. about, you can see here, about 9 million for, for and production levels and, and, ten, and thousands of tons. So we had about 500 uh, uh, thousand tons uh five thousand tons produced in 2019 and we have a forecast as well so if you want the complete uh complete uh, document you can find it on our publications page uh which completely gives you a picture of all the elements uh of the eu insects as food market uh including your uh, elements on on the production their forecast on the type of products uh we uh, the amount of consumers like about we are planning 260,000 tons by 2030 so that's the forecast uh for for 2030 if i uh, if i'm addressing that question correctly for food and by 2030 for consumers we want to reach 300 we predict that we would reach 390 million consumers by then from 2019. does that answer the question I think we did we lose connection? We just wait for a second. Your man will be back anytime now. So yes, indeed. So just to continue to what I said earlier, these we have this forecast and and the production values in 2019. Uh, you can find them uh, freely available on our website. Uh, it's uh, on our publications section on on the IPF website.
I think we can just hold on for a yeah, yeah, moment. Think, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, please. I lost the connection and I need to put the question. So here we are. Uh, one second, let me move in here. All right, so yeah, so the next one is um, from Florent. Are there regulations that are blocking exportation of processed insects that are being intended for pet food, per food and product? Uh, you mean into the EU? Uh, I mean, I guess uh, you cannot say blocking, but I think it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at least for feed, you have to be on a list of countries, of authorized list of countries. So if your respective country is on that list, uh, then you are allowed to import into the EU. If uh, your country is not on that list, then you cannot uh, import into the EU. So you would have to uh, contact the national authorities on that, that point for imports. Okay. Yeah. The next one is similar because is there a limitation on supply if we start converting many packaged foods from meat to insects, for example, for pet? Um, uh, for for pet food, uh, I mean, that's that's the issue. I mean, uh, we have to increase production levels. That's that's of course a key factor. But then uh, for pet food, it's a little different because uh, the the industry for specific for pet food is already more or less been there for a while, a little bit, and um, and it's more about addressing uh, those levels of uh, production. So if the demand is high. Uh, for zoo animals, it's always there, and for pet food too, it's it, because of the hypoallergenicity properties of insects, it's actually good for pet food, huh? and it's a growing market, but for when we talk on insects as food and feed under IPIF terms, we talk about feed for specifically more food producing animals, but pet food is almost there because they follow the same criteria. Okay, great. So the next one is regarding U.S. regulations. So... If you know anything about U.S. regulations that will allow the use of insects extracted the ingredients inside human food, apart from uh, for U.S. regulations, uh, I I think uh, you should contact NASIA. Uh, I am aware about certain okay. uh, certain uh, developments because it's based on uh, the uh, the general food safety uh, aspect because there's a, a grass system, uh, so it depends on the region and where you're applying for it. So in, in the overall context, at least I'm not aware yet of a development in that, that area, but then I highly recommend you contact the insect organization of food and feed called NACIA, N-A-C-I-A. Uh, uh, I think they would be better positioned to answer your question of the re most recent developments at least. Yeah. Okay. So then when live insects or raw insects might become legal for food venues, for restaurants because they taste better uh, uh i i don't i don't think so i mean uh, for now uh, when you do a novel food application uh you have to give the application of the product so you have to say that it's it's uh, it's a process to thing so once you can of course apply to the european you can send a novel food application to the european commission stating that it's a product is a live insect uh, and it's for that and it's up to the european commission we'll send it to efsa EFSA will do a risk assessment, and if it's 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 safe for human consumption in a food safety perspective, then I think it's, it'll be fine. But then, uh, it's uh, it completely depends on the application of the novel food. So as okay. long as you don't put it, you cannot uh, comment on that. Okay, this one is a little bit related to. So, do you think that in order to demand a policy that allows the insect trade, it is important to have protocols for ex situ management of insects, unnecessarily in controlled environments? Yeah. Uh, so, for if you talk about in the EU context, um, you have to follow the EU standards if you're importing into the EU. That's the first uh, threshold. So, uh, whether or not you import over here for food or feed, you have to follow the 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 animal uh, health legislation, uh, and you have to uh, have the same standards. So, in the end, again, I mentioned about the fact that your country needs to be on the list of countries that's authorized. At the moment, for insects feed. The list of countries is uh, based on the list of countries authorized for meat, so for raw meat. Yeah. So, so it's that countries that's allowed. So if your if your country is not on that list, then you cannot. Uh, and for food, there is a list, new list that's being made. So at the moment, there are only three countries 
Uh, on that list, uh, we have Canada, Switzerland, and, and South Korea, who's allowed to import insects food into the EU. So it's because uh, they are uh, the the European Commission asked them to uh, for the national authorities to to show that their systems are in place and that their standards are matching to the European uh, European uh, regulations. So of the product. So in the end, it's about uh, about the um, the national authorities and and the trade in that way. Yeah, I think we lost. Yeah, I can see some questions. I think we can wait for your amount to come. But yes, uh, um, IPF works at the at the EU level, so our our uh, focus is on EU policy, uh, and not at the international level, as in as in the whole global scale, but at the EU level. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Today, the internet is not working properly. Uh, it's never happened before. Anyway, so let's continue. Yeah. So the next one. Change here. Um, so they were asking if you. Next one. So if you have anything in Brazil, uh, I mean, you mentioned before that you are worldwide, but you have more EU members. But I mean, many of yeah. Them, yeah. True. I mean, uh, our activities are focused on EU. So, uh, but then we have members from from other places. But our main focus is EU policy. So as as our as IPF, we represent the European producers. So basically on the EU, but as I mentioned, we have a connection uh, with other insect-based organizations. So there is one upcoming uh, organization that I was in contact with. Uh, they are still forming it in for South America. So I think you would probably be in touch with uh, somebody from 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 those regions. So they are still developing that that association over there. Uh, it's very young, and uh, I think um, they would be official soon. So, okay, great. So the next one: Which EU funds are in support of helping corporations to help grow the human consumption? Horizon 2020. So I mean, like, do you have any information regarding this? I mean, it's it's of course it's uh, these products and uh, these projects and uh, and as I mentioned that we are mentioning the farm to fork strategy and it specifically also uh, has indicated that they would like to uh, increase research and development and fund the uh, insect insects as food and feed as well so we can uh, that's something that we would be uh, expecting uh, in the near future so that would be the direction. Okay. okay. So next one from Mexico. What kind of tech or emerging tech is used to farm rainy season insects? Can they be grown in controlled areas? Uh, if you if you mean those that grow in in humid climates, yes, it depends uh, on 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 your facility. Uh, of course, you have to maintain your temperature uh, indoors, so it would depend on that. So humidity temperature. And uh, that's what more most of the most of the farms are uh, in, in at least in Europe. We are uh, having a constant uh, regulated temperature and 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 uh, and farming conditions. So, uh, I mean, it's I cannot go into the specifications of the of the of the machinery, but uh, as, as as much as I can say is that there is uh, companies that do that, and and um, mostly it's about the humidity and managing those the the temperatures in your in your facility. Right. So, from a regular regulatory point of view, is it possible, according to the Nobel Food, producing set food products in EU, if these products are aimed to be exported outside the EU? In other words, Nobel Food regulations intended is intended only for product marketing, or does it limit the product manufacturing within the EU? So, it's uh, uh, Nobel Food. It's production and marketing of the product in the EU. So, it's it's that's what it covers the application of the species as well. So, at what quantities 
uh, what labeling requirements uh, the specifications are mentioned when there is an authorization. Okay, great. So next one. Um, this is just to, to to complete one more point that uh, for the question is that uh, it doesn't mean that you can market another product from outside the EU into the EU. Uh, so you can yeah, it, you can always do that when you are firstly on the list of countries to allow to import and uh, yeah that's that's another thing altogether. So that's when the product will be authorized as well. Yeah. Okay. Next one from Jonathan. What do you consider is the best way to demand public policies that favor the development of the agri-food sector based on the consumption of insects in developing uh, countries? The, I mean, you, if you're talking about a strategy, it's about uh, organizing yourself, firstly. Uh, I mean, as I mentioned, we if it started with five companies, so that would be your start. Uh, and uh, and representing your 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 needs basically to the policy uh, or policy officers and the policy makers to that would be the step to take uh, in case if you want to make change at the policy level at the at the at the governmental national level uh, is that you have to be concrete on on, on those elements that you need and uh, how you could uh, implement them and to contribute in the system so and also it's more about representation as well work that we do as IPIF it's about uh, talking to them uh, to the policy makers officers and and, and 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 to communicate what the farmers are thinking about and how the industry can be developed more or less so that's one way to go you can always refer to the FAO uh, report from 2012 which has uh, the list of um, things that you could do uh, in in in, uh, in developing a sector from a scratch so that's i think that would be a very good document for you thank you so eduardo what is the link to an organization to check all regulations on insect trading for pet food as raw material or even as finished product for example dog biscuits um i mean to an organization I, I didn't understand the question that much. Uh, yeah. So I mean, as, as as we do not check, of course, the the regulations ourselves to, in each company. We don't go and do that. That's not our job. It's the it's uh, first of all the company's aspect, and you have uh, the regulators coming and making sure that you are doing it. So uh, of course, when you come about trade, you have the the checks at border control, of course, uh, and you have to uh, have your uh, if you're having insect based products that's coming in, you have a certificate. Of health certificate that you have to uh, also have when you're importing uh, insect-based feed or food. So all those aspects are there in the regulation. Okay. All right. Next one from Carlota. Is there any list for insects to be exported from EU to outside the EU countries as food? Uh, no, it depends on which country you're exporting to. So mm -hmm. if they have a regulation in place, do they have a restriction? Or not so it's as simple as that so it's your target uh, country and what is the situation over there okay so you need to do it individually basically and check it in the mm -hmm. yeah yeah of course okay so next one from florence now that i think about it are there companies linked to uh, ip that will be willing to do testing of product for a specific type of trials and for low cost like cnr um, so I prefer as an organization, we, we, we do, uh, not, do not get involved in such things uh, that, that much uh, because uh, we, of course, we can communicate the message if you're interested in things to our members, but we cannot force anybody to do anything as oh. such. Yeah. And uh, of course, if there is some element like you want to do some trials and things like that, I mean, we always could communicate about it in a newsletter or something, but that's the extent that we can go to. Uh, and other, as long as it's not coming from the government, uh, from from the policymakers or the regulators, because at some some levels we uh, try to facilitate when it's something that's very uh, um, necessary at a policy level, of course. But normally we just uh, inform our members about such opportunities. But it's up to the members. To do so yeah. Well, and last but no least, what is the estimated first investment to a start a medium to large insect? production <laughs> uh, <laughs> good question but again as yeah. i mentioned uh, it I'm, I'm legally can i legally cannot uh, uh, get into this topic because uh, you have the uh, 
uh, EU, EU uh, competition law, which uh, prohibits uh, organizations to talk about price and investment and things like that. So it's uh, it's a, a little tricky to give an exact uh, pinpoint on what's the uh, situation. But from my experience, I think that if you ask me personally or something, it's different because um, it's up to the country again, what you, where you're placing it and uh, it depends on your scale and who what your target product is. So in, in general, that's the general answer that I can give, but I cannot give you a, uh, a clear point uh, price or things like that. So yeah. Okay. So I think like the last question is if you could like uh, explain the benefits of uh, being associated to your organization. You know. Uh, yeah. So I mean, being part of our organization is it's it's uh, to make sure that we develop such uh, oppo uh, unlock opportunities for the sector. So that's the first yeah. uh, that's the first aspect about it. So representation. Uh, uh, that your sector is a relevant sector and it's relevant enough to contribute to the to the goals uh, that yeah. is meant globally as well as uh, at the EU level and uh, yeah I mean that's the most important uh, element of it we are actually making sure that we are forming the regulator the uh, forming or assisting in formulation of this new regulatory uh, landscape in the EU so that's uh, this kind of support that IPF gives. I mean, uh, it started from a scratch, and now we have wow. these different different elements that is mean in the regulation specifically for insects, because we need to maximize the potential in the end also for 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 utilizing insects to the maximum capacity, so that we can uh, have this uh, complete portfolio of products and uh, and contributions that we could give. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. I think uh, we finished. We have quite a large uh, uh, session, you know, but yeah. I think it was worth it because I think this topic is really interesting, and I think it's going to be more and more hot in the agricultural world for sure. Yeah. Um, I really like the example that you just gave about the sushi. You know how yeah. people were thinking about sushi a few years ago that they were not keen on trying it and now you have like specialist restaurants and it is adopted everywhere okay exactly. so i i think after this uh presentation i can see we will see a few sushis <laughs> within the insects food and feet for sure you know uh thanks again for your time uh, i really appreciate that 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 you took the time you know uh, uh for this webinar uh, from Isan, uh, we thank you. And, uh, you know, for all the people that are interested, you know, in our next webinars, next week, we are talking about another really interesting topic like silver agriculture, uh -huh. <laughs> which is also really interesting. And, you know, if any of you are interested in learning more about Isan and about our international programs, you know, just go to the website, ask for information. We are here to help you. I think we are trying to show you that we are really forward thinking. We are really th thinking about the future, and that's why we, we, we bring this content. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.